Hey guys and girls, this is Wei with 3dmodelinghero.com and for this video I'm going to be showing you how I would model a nose and for this example I'm going to be referencing uh, Brad Pitt's nose so the first stage of modeling is to identify the edge flow of the model so if we look at this, um, for the edge flow it's probably going to be something like this where you know it's just coming straight down to the tip and into the nostrils and going and then here going out to the cheeks and then the eye socket will you know, kind of go around this way. And if we were to em envision uh, how the geometry would look, it could probably be something like this. And if you're a beginner in modeling, you know, this is a very good practice for you to take any kind of reference. You know, before you model, just draw these grid lines and you know, try to visualize how the low model would look like. So this is how I'm kind of envisioning it. So we're going to start modeling uh, with this reference. Okay, so to start, I am using a plane geometry, and from there, I'll just start cutting in geometry and uh, start pushing and pulling to get the overall shape. And to visualize it, it's almost as if you're putting like a sheet over your face, right? And you get, you know, the general form of the nose. And that's what we're modeling at the first stage, just very basic uh, forms. And of course, the video here is being sped up, and at the end of uh, each stage, I'll slow it back down, and then we can talk about uh, the current progress of a model. Okay, so this is real time, and I just want to pause here for a bit just to show you where we're at with the nose. Uh, if you look at it right now, obviously, in terms of proportions, it's pretty weird, right? You know, from the profile and even from the front, you know, the nostrils are all wrong. But the important thing is that, you know, we just want to get the major edge flow going. And you know, make sure that we have these edges right here, where there's gonna be hard creases, right? So once we have that, you know, we can, the proportions that we can easily fix. Now, just to subdivide it, uh, just to show you how it looks like. I mean, it looks pretty crappy, but it's getting there. You know, the edges are there, so you can see it's kind of soft. But we can we can make it sharp, uh, a little bit harder, you know, very easily. So from here, it's just a matter of. Uh, you know, cleaning things up and fixing the proportions and, you know, adding some more edges to uh, make it look better. Okay, so we're back to real time, and here we have a pretty decent, you know, low poly model. But what we want to do is to, uh, we want to push it forward a little bit more so that we can create a nice uh, high res model that's ready for film production. And in film, they use a lot of uh, subdivision models. And what that is, is basically just a, a low poly model that if you subdivide it, you know, you get a really nice uh, high res model. Now in this case, you know, everything kind of washes out and that's because we don't have all the geometry there yet. Um, so at this point, I should probably fix little errors like this where there's a triangle. I mean, not that you can't have triangles, it's probably not right here, it might be uh, problematic. So that's one easy way to get rid of it. So now to, in order to create a nice crease right here, what you can do is just dub up on the edges. So if you create uh, another edge like this, and when you subdivide it, you get a nice crease there. Uh, of course, this is a quick example. We probably won't be cutting it like that, but you get the idea. So that's the next stage: is you know just to cut in more edges and overall add in more geometry so that you know we have enough to play with to get all the little details in this in this nose.
Okay, so we're back to real time, and at this point, I just want to talk about uh, some of the things about this model at this stage. And a lot of you have asked about uh, having triangles in your models. And with sub-D models, it's perfectly fine to have these kind of triangles in your models. And that's because when you subdivide it, <clears throat> so this is one level of subdivision, it turns your triangle into a quad. Now, if you subdivide two times, obviously, it's, it's even smaller. So, I mean, it's pretty clean. Even though it's a diamond shape, you know, at that size, it still works. So that's why I use triangles. And you'll notice, like, right here, uh, why would I have, like, you know, two little triangles here when I can just, just clean them and make, um, make them into quads? And the reason is that I'm trying to keep the edge flow right here coming down, right? It's the same thing that I'm seeing here. So as a comparison, let's say I, I clean this area up. So I'm going to cut that up and then delete that. And I'll subdivide both two times. Now, looking at it, you see how that just kind of washes away the edge. And with here, you can see, you know, there's a little ridge here. And that's what I'm seeing here. So that's the reason why, you know, I keep um, these triangles here. Because it's, it's, it's more important to have the correct edge flow than to have a, uh, you know, like a cleaner model with this. So another thing that you'll notice is that I have these uh, T-joints here where, you know, the, the edge just kind of ends uh, abruptly, like just like right here too. And the reason I'm doing that is because if I'm not working in an area, I'm not going to extend the edge all the way there. You know, I could easily do that, but I'm not working up here. So it's like I don't want to clutter the model. I want to keep it as low as possible. So since I'm only working in this area, um, that's why I only cut up to here. And when I'm ready to work in this area, then I'll start cutting this part up. And lastly, you'll notice that um, the nostril here, you know, there's no geometry here. And the, the reason I do that is because if I have um, geometries behind, when I'm working on the exterior and I try to select things, I'll end up selecting, um, you know, the vertices or edge behind it, and that just kind of screw things up. So I always like to uh, keep these kind of inner areas clear, and that goes kind of with, you know with, with the with the eye socket too. I'll just leave it wide open like this, and until I'm ready, then I'll start extruding things. It's just easier this way. Okay, so here is our final nose model. And looking at the geometry, it's still relatively low, but it's got enough detail in there and, uh, and edges that if you just subdivide it once, it's a pretty uh, decent model. But it's still, you can still see a little, that's a little faceted. So if we do it two times, now you have a nice high-res model. And at this kind of resolution, you're pretty much ready for, for rendering. And now checking the, the features, um, from the top view here, you can see you know how, how the geometry flows out to the cheeks, which is correct. And you got a little pinch here, you know, which is which is also correct. Uh, whether or not it really looks like Brad Pitt's nose, um, that's hard to say because you generally need um, you know different angles uh, to match up correctly. But overall, I think you know this this nose works and it feels natural. And it, by natural, um, I mean you know little things like you see how this crease tightens up. And then it fans out, and those are the little things that make uh, geometry look, you know, feel natural. Because if you look at uh, creases in your body, um, it, it it has that characteristic. So I mean, overall, I think this is a pretty good nose. So I hope you found this helpful, and I will have this model up on my blog at 3dmodelinghero.com. You can download it if you want. So thanks for watching, and I will see you next time.